So today I am showing you the state of my design wall. This has worked for many years and it is just a piece of felt off of the bolt, probably about two yards. And I got it at Joann's many years ago, maybe like seven years ago. And it fell off a few months back and I put it back up, it's fallen off again. I decided I wanted to do something different. I wanted to get a little bit more professional look. I would love to do more videos here and I think it would look really cool if I had a nice design wall instead of this. So I um, found a company and they create felt panels. This is actually for the music industry. So they kind of absorb sound. My sewing room gets cold in the winter. Maybe they'll absorb heat. I don't know, we'll see. But I decided this would be the perfect thing for a design wall. This is felt, these are felt. However, when I received them, when I opened the box and I felt them, I noticed that they were very, very stiff. Like the, the surface was kind of slickered. All the air was like sucked out of it. So the surface was very slick. I decided to use sandpaper. Sandpaper, I just kind of scrubbed it and I'll show you later in the video what I did. I started using this, however, my arms got tired using this and I achieved the same effect much better and with a lot less time. So I would recommend um, sandpaper. All of the tools I'm using, other than these felt panels, I already had around my house. So I just wanted to kind of make do with all the stuff and I found in my house and um, build a design wall that will look a little bit more professional. So let's jump in. I'm going to pull this down and then I think, I think I'm gonna play with what possibilities I could create with these hexagons. If you know me, I love hexagons. I have lots of patterns that feature hexagons in different ways. So if you like hexagons, go check out my patterns. Let's jump in and let's have some fun. Okay, so when I first opened my box of hexagon felt, When I pulled it out of the box, I realized that they're very compressed and very flat. And if you feel it and you feel the felt wall, my felt wall almost feels like batting. And this doesn't have any tooth or any um, texture to it. It feels like it's all the air has been sucked out of it and it's very solid. So if you were to put tiny pieces of fabric to it, I did a little test and they seem to stay on, which is great. But when I put like a large block, it kind of slid off. So I decided I wanted to add some texture and I started with using this. I'm just gonna getting it really good, all the edges, and that works. I think it's better like that, but you have to use a lot more arm muscle. So I started using sandpaper, and you don't have to use as much strength. After a box with a little scrubber, <laughs> my arms were burning. So 
I am just going to do a box of these. paper over my cutting mat. This is an older cutting mat that I don't use as much. I thought I would go over with you what I did to um, make um, it's not the best paint job yet. Hopefully I'll end up fixing that. Um, there's a color that I actually want to get. I haven't gotten it yet. I have a lot of greens in my sewing room. And so this is kind of the color I'm going for. So I did not achieve it here. So I'm going to paint some more. Maybe I'll start off with adding some white to this. So I am trying to use things that I have already in my sewing and craft room. So I am using ink instead of fabric paint. Whatever paint you have on hand and whatever paint you use, you are going to want to make sure that um, that paint isn't going to leave a slick surface. So like this is perfect because it's ink and it's just gonna absorb into the fabric. And when I say fabric, I mean felt. Um, this is what the boards are definitely made out of felt. So I'm just gonna play a little bit here. I already have a coat of green and I wanna see what white would do. Uh, water down white over this. It's probably gonna look like a mess, but I wonder if it would give me a little bit more of a dull green. And I'm kind of looking for that dull green. And that's exactly what I did. I just kind of covered the surface. I had a little bit more ink the last time I did this. I'm gonna have to buy more white because my white is almost out. But... I ended up with a few different shades of green. I really love how it turned out. They're very imperfect. They're very organic and I can't wait to see how they look with all the other hexagons. Um, I am just going to start pulling down 
the felt and all the blocks I have on the wall and then start playing with the design. to get a feel for how I want the different colors of the different hexagons to look. I have a gray, a really light gray. I painted some green and I have a lot of white. So in all, I think I got four boxes of 12 and I might end up buying more. I probably need to cut some but we'll just tackle that as we go. I am going to use painter's tape to um, kind of get a feel for how I want the design to look. So the great thing about using painter's tape first is if I don't like the way it's going, I can just remove it. And if I don't have everything aligned correctly, I can just remove it and stick it back up and um, work it out as I go. Gray's out. that I wasn't going to have a straight line with the hexagons. Um, it was going to run into my ceiling. So I decided to um, start with the point that I was going to have trouble with and work out.
now that I realized um, some of my green hexagons that I had painted, um, they started dripping on my wall. So definitely allow like 24 hours for the hexagons to dry. Don't do what I did and um, kind of pushed it. I was excited to get this video done so I did not leave enough time for drying but it ended up working out. I used my blow dryer um, and I let them dry outside for a while. design mapped out in my head. I worked through the process of what possibilities I had and decided on flowers and I think that's really cute and very uh, quilty. So I am going to start taking the back off the paper back off of my hexagons that reveals the adhesive and then I'm just going to stick them to the wall and try to apply enough pressure to make them stay up there. So yay! It's time to start the finishing process.
my brick wall. I have this nail that's kind of embedded into it and it sticks out. So I could never lay my other hanging wall flush because of that little nail. Um, so for this wall, I am going to cut a hole in one of the panels so that it can stick out and um, lay flat with the wall and adhere flat to the wall. So it worked out. <laughs> that are empty kind of like how it is on this side so I want to get I think a couple more hexagons so I need to buy another box and maybe I can add another line to the bottom and use this one because this one is extra I'm not sure if I love how vibrant the green is so it's possible I might add like a layer of white to the green. I don't know, but it's pretty stark that contrast. So not sure how I feel about that. Kind of like this one the most of all the greens. What do you think? Well, I am excited. Let me look and see if I have blocks that I can put up. Mm. 
Okay, so the first time I ever did a block of the month was Day of the Dead fabric. Um, I think most of it is Alexander Henry and I love it. I've never done anything with it. The fabric, because um, my local quilt shop here in Tucson will give you piece, a piece of fabric with each block pattern. So it was ombre fabrics. So, like all of those are from one cut of fabric, all those blues that um, dance around the Day of the Dead fabric. So let's play with the wall and see how it goes. See if it, see if it's, uh, see if the blocks will stay up first of all. And then hopefully tomorrow when I come in here, I am going to keep my fingers crossed that all of these hexagons will stay up as well. I might give them a quick pound because it does tell you um, to press firmly. And I, I think I did press firmly, but I'll go back over everybody and press them again. But let's play real fast because I really can't resist. Fun, fun. It's a funny story behind this guy. Um, I, you have to turn your block in to get the next blocks free. So I thought I had not made this block. Actually, no, I knew I had made this block, but I thought I had lost it. So I remade it. I don't know which one you like more. I'm thinking, I like the other one more. Kind of fun. Let's look, step back. I think I'm going to need to put some stashing in between it all. But how exciting. I could not have done this on my own wall, old wall. So hooray. Now I have to clean up my mess. Thank you for being here and watching the video. Um, you can subscribe to my channel and you can check out my blog. Um, most of my videos are, um, they tie into my blog. So definitely you wanna go check out my blog to learn more. Thank you, have a good one.